I, I don't know, Messi, if you still want to engage him. No. I want him to go and vote. <laughs> to go and get it's okay. So that, yeah. Try and get to your polling <laughs> units and uh, let's have you back. Uh, let us know what's going on as, as soon as you're able to, you know, get to your location. But we'll get back to you. I, guess I, am, I am very ready. I am very ready to give you on the spot assessment of my polling unit beautiful. all day from today to evening time. Oh, uh, it's beautiful. my sacrifice for Nigeria and I'm beautiful. very happy to do that. Thank you very much. So we are looking forward to hearing from you again very, very soon. Okay. Um, <laughs> having said speaking all that. Speaking of logistics. Yeah. Speaking of logistics. We've been, we've been so particular about vehicular transportation, logistics, but even the ballot papers. As we speak, the elections for the two National Assembly positions, Senate and House of Representatives, may be cancelled in Lagos and Undo as a result of the protestation of the Labour Party. Because, yeah, I was going to that because... Because the Labour yeah. Party, the Labour Party's representatives in Lagos and Undo states yesterday made a, you know, a, they complained that the logo of the party mm. was according to their own independent examination on the presidential ballot paper, but was missing on the Senate and House of Representatives ballot paper. And given, given the dynamism that the Labour Party has garnered in recent times, it would be a major electoral travesty. That also speaks to logistics. So I... You know, we have reasons to want to celebrate INEC, but as a Nigerian, who knows how these things sometimes play out, I want to be very circumspect in quickly rushing out to be singing Kumbaya, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I was going to ask that because that complaint came up, I think yesterday when someone, a Labour Party chieftain in Ondo State was complaining. And even Labour State. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm just hearing that one now. So that means, and the Electoral Act did not uh, capture this. It captures it. That when there's no logo. In inevitably. In fact, there, there, is, there is a subsisting uh, court uh, pronouncement on it. And it, it, it's not peculiar to Nigeria. The elections in Berlin, the elections in Berlin were recently cancelled and redone. Indeed, the winner of the first round, the, win, the initial winner, the SDP mayor of Berlin, ultimately lost a position because the election had to be redone as a result of mm -hmm. logistical challenges like this. The Constitutional Court of Germany had to cancel that election because, uh, in their own case, they had a couple of things, including such a, a football. They had a marathon holding in the city on the day of the election, so that caused logistical uh, problem. Added to that, added to that was the fact that when they got, when most people got to their polling uh, polling booths, election materials were not enough. And the, the German Constitutional Court had to cancel that election, you know, ordered for a, 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 a rerun. And at the rerun, somebody that won initially had to. So I'm sitting here now as somebody who, whose uh, interest is more particular about the Lagos. Uh, you know, it's general in Nigeria, but Lagos has the largest. So if it is true, according to. The labor, according to what was reported yesterday from the, from the Labour Party chieftains in Lagos and Ondo State, that elections cannot subsist, cannot meet the integrity of the Electoral Act. That automatically. Well, logistics, <laughs> logistics. Somebody won, somebody won a reality show based on logistics. <laughs> this, is, this is the point where okay. you know there's a very popular saying uh, pressure or tiwa yeah. uh, because it's looking like there's so much pressure on logistics but it's very important but one of the things that Nika Gule had mentioned mm. is that 
Uh, if you look, the, look at the Electoral Act of 2022, it makes provision for, I mean, a reputation, I mean, mm. that election to be conducted, especially when materials had not arrived. That's not usually the case, you know, prior to this time. Not, uh, well, not, not when materials have not arrived. The beavers. inevitability, the inevitability, ineluctability of the use of beavers. Okay, so w which is, which is I mean, almost something to go by. Now, I think that you need to understand the reason for logistics. Don't forget that time is of the essence. We live in Africa, and time management is still part of it. So if you have an election, I want, you, I want to take your mind back to why maybe we have dwelled on the issue of logistics, transportation having... Uh, we're hoping that at this point, you know, the officials should be at the polling unit with these materials. So election the can start at the actual time. to be at the polling time. unit from 7, open balloting for, for 8.30. So this is 7.52. And it's very critical that we have INEC, the polling unit, if not 100%, I mean, there's no perfect system. But let's say, you know, 90, 95% of the polling unit with the officials and the materials ready. Because... Nyamgu, you would agree with me that sometimes people go to the polling unit to cast their votes, and uh, if the officials are not there, they get back to their homes. Mm. And then, you know, the time for, you know, vote casting probably would just end by four. And most times you have extension, but you probably would have lost a lot of persons who are already tired and exhausted. So that's also another point of where people are disenfranchised because of the inability of the officials to show up on time. Time is very important, and we can't take that out. But we haven't been very, you know, very, very great and big on, you know, time management. I think that's it. I think that's what we've we're seen improvements. At. We've seen improvements over the years on that. To be honest with you, uh, barring the fact that you alluded to uh, a reported case of a broken down, uh, a, dilapid <laughs> a broken down, dilapidated INEC uh, contactors oh, uh, vehicle. I neck contactors vehicle, barring that, let's be very honest with ourselves, I want to believe that um, in, most, in most polling units this morning, uh, the contractors, the logistics contractors would, uh, would tick the bus rightly. I want to believe that. Hello, Gidado. Okay, um, until he joins us, uh, there are still other issues that we need to just uh, look through. Um, Bivas, Bivas is good. Everything about this election, we're hoping it will be. Okay, so um, I think we have Okay, Gerardo is back on there. Gerardo, good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're fine. We're fine. Uh, yes. Just uh, state where you are and tell us what is going on right now. Hey, actually, I'm at Mustafa Primary School, Yola, Adamawa State. Mm. And uh, people have already started joining queues, and the INEC officials are here. They are setting up <coughs> their uh, desk. They have already pasted uh, some of the uh, IET materials unit, unit uh, 10. I mean, unit 10 now. Okay. And you can see people behind me. Who have joined the queue? So, but they have not started accreditation yet. They are setting up their uh, desk right now. Uh, when did the materials arrive at the polling unit that you are, the area ten that you're talking about? They arrive around eight twenty. Eight twenty. That's like that's like uh, an hour, thirty minutes, or twenty no, 10 minutes. minutes before the official opening. Okay, opening well, time of yeah, okay, they are still early as it is. Okay, so uh, what is the general atmosphere like? Uh, the people, the excitement, or the security consciousness, or whatever it is that we need to know at this point. Sorry. Hello. <coughs> Can you hear us? Sorry, I'm on. Somebody was calling my line. Oh, okay. Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, yes. So what is the security situation like? What is the general feel of the people uh, about the elections? And, you know, just let us know how the people feel about it. Yeah, the security personnel are here and only uh, police officers who are here, really. So but everything is calm. <coughs> I didn't get that. Did Hello? You? 
Ah, the security personnel are there. Yeah, the, the network is a bit faint, but I can hear you now. Okay, go on. There was a break yeah. somehow. So go on and tell us how the atmosphere is and how the people are receiving uh, the atmosphere is calm. Are acting. Yeah, yes. Can you hear me? The atmosphere is calm. No, no problem. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. How many, how many security personnel are where you are? Uh, only one. Oh, okay. One, one recognizable yes. one, as it is. Okay, get that. One police officer. We're, we're hoping that when more activities come, uh, you will be able to fill us in. But we're glad to know that where you are is safe, oh, where you yes. are is calm, and materials have arrived. We hope that you will fill us in uh, when more things happen uh, in yes. your area. Yeah. Yes, I will keep you updated, really. Okay. Yeah. All right, the materials you. have arrived only in one pulling unit. They have about three, but the other uh, pulling officers have not yet arrived. Oh, okay. Within the primary school, there are three pulling units. In one primary that school? That only one has opened now. Okay. And they have not started accreditation yet. Okay. Uh, let us know when it begins and when others uh, arrive as well. Thank you very much, Gitado. Okay. It's okay. Uh, I don't want it's to... All we are here with some. I don't want to jump in. Which, which somebody? Uh, sorry, Gidado, you say you are there with somebody that would like to talk to us. Wow. Okay, let me look for the other people. So, so Gidado, maybe we connect with you. We'll reconnect with you. Just make the findings. If there's someone that needs to talk with us, uh, we will reconnect with you for that. Okay, you, you were saying that stubborn lady logistic. Oh, that stubborn man. <laughs> I don't I don't want to be chauvinistic. <laughs> I don't want to be quoted to be chauvinistic. <laughs> that stubborn guy. Logistics, <laughs> logistics, logistics. According to INEC, mm. personnel, INEC personnel and materials ought to have arrived at polling units at about 7 a.m. Yeah. Open ballot at 8.30. According to Guidado, in one out of three polling units in a polling station. We have, you usually have polling stations with a couple of polling units. Yeah. In one out of three polling units in a polling station at that particular location, only one had personnel arrived. And they arrived 10 minutes to the official time to open. Now, given what I was going to ask him, but I didn't want to jump in, Given the routine that INEC had encouraged voters to subject their personnel to, they couldn't have done that in 10 minutes because INEC said they must show all the voting materials to be intact. They must show the beavers to have a zero number of registrants on it. Now, those rituals couldn't have been done under 10 minutes. But you know what? We are where we are, and we are following the story. <laughs> <laughs> but so, boy, so you see where we are now. I'm not, you know, I'm not just one that will tell you, I mean, I told you. But no, no. I, I, I've <laughs> always said that on issues of logistics, I keep an open mind. And keeping an open mind means that I will only analyze what has been factually reported to us. Fortunately, in this instance, you have somebody literally on that, on, on that, on this thing. And reporting from that location, he told us one out of three polling units was in operation. Mm. And he told us even the time that the INEC personnel arrived right. at that location. And using what should be the standard to reconcile with the facts that he reported to us first hand, we're seeing that logistics is a very stubborn guy. No, but, but uh, you see, this t still speaks to the readiness, the preparedness, and everything about INEC. Now, how would you rate the level of dissemination of information to the people? Because, for instance, in this location that you're talking about, even the people that have gone there to vote may not even know that it is a right 
it is a provision that they need to interrogate some of the activities of these uh, electoral officers that are coming. Uh, show that the materials are, re are here, are show that uh, the beavers is zero and all that. They may have just gone there to vote and they will not bother to look at those things. Do you think uh, INEC and whatever relevant body else did enough to give the information that people need to the people that really need it? How much is enough of information in an environment that presents the, the functional inadequacies of a society like Nigeria, where literacy level is relatively low. Indeed, functional literacy level, functional literacy, it, not be read alphabets and recognize one to ten, not be ambient educational, functional literacy level is even. So I, I'm sitting here thinking, as you see, liberal democracy is always beautified organically when the literacy level is functionally rich. So within the context of what we have, can I say Anek has not done enough? Give <laughs> So I mean, maybe it's too early. <laughs> it might just be too early. Maybe we just. How can it be too see. early if these people maybe do no, not but, even but have the information? The thing uh, is, and that should be the average because the gentleman reported, fortunately, to a major network from a location that presents the average paraphernalia of a Nigerian of an average Nigerian polling, polling so, unit. So, Actually, in Nigeria that you people are giving me sitting with you on this privileged seat. You see, we came from Yola mm. that ordinarily should be the average the average electoral portraiture of how balloting is done in Nigeria. Yola, Yola. in Adamawa State. We came to one of the most sophisticated locales on the continent of Africa, Etiosa a body of rich Africans, not only Nigerians, using, using the parameters, HDI, Human Development Index, Etiosa presents, from Ikoyi to Etiosa, presents one of the best HDIs you can, you can imagine. Now, at Etiosa, and given the fact that this is Lagos, this is Lagos. This is There's Lagos. no welcome to Lagos. So <laughs> this is this Lagos. Is Lagos. <laughs> given, the fact, given the fact that this is Lagos, you can see the vulnerability, the functional vulnerability or operational vulnerability of INEC because at at, as at 844, 44, yeah. at as 844, the person giving us the live feed report, behind her, we could see the yellow buses. The yellow That's mini enough. buses mm. that I know. Oh, yellow you buses. You see now. <laughs> the, uh, that we could see the yellow <laughs> mini buses down for being unpacked of INEX material. 844, Lagos. They Nigeria. were supposed to, Lagos, Nigeria. They were supposed to have been there from 7 a.m. by 8.30 all to have commenced uh, operations, in, you know, direct operations mm. to the people. So I'm sitting there now thinking, and that was exactly the question you asked me yes. before going, before taking that footage or taking that report. My sister, reality is reality anywhere in the world. No. You function, you, you will function as an individual or a corporate entity in an ecosystem given the reality of that ecosystem. The reality of our ecosystem is that the people who often run such buses mini buses. You remember what society has done to them? We large, they are largely those we left behind. They are largely because of the failure of leadership. I'm not talking of political leadership alone. No. I tell myself, that's why when I look at the mirror, the things I've seen where I've been fortunate to live is Bola Oba living up to the building. Because you have left them so behind, you, you want that kind of person to, to know the importance of time. Mm. <laughs> you know, that's his mentality. Within the context of that reality, what much could I not do? We have a lot of work to do. You and I most of all, because those who are in political leadership, 
if we check our contact list in this studio, they are just one of our friends. Mm. But the reality is that these are the people we need, we are leading over. We better be more innovative, more creative, and more value, more value initiating than this by and by, we want to follow like they do in the West, where they already have, you know, where they already have a base. Mm. But, but I, I'm, I'm wondering, when, we, when INEC was talking about training people and all that, I never heard, maybe I was the one who never heard, uh, them engaging these transporters and telling them what they need to do. They talked to the leadership, they signed the agreements, they did everything. But I, I doubt if I ever engaged them and talked uh, about the importance and everything that they you need have, to follow. Must have, they must have. In fact, in must fact, have. I guess they, We're that, assuming. I, 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 I guess that was even why they went beyond the law of contract after having signed contracts with the owners of those buses. They went beyond the law of contract to even engage enforcers. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.